today before we get started, get everybody tuned in and informed. We've got our after service fellowship meal today. So make plans to stay and eat with us and enjoy some food and fellowship. We've got a community game night Friday, September the 20th at 6.30. Anybody who wants to come, come and fellowship and bring your A game, bring your a game and bring some snacks and let's just have a good time in game and, and just have some fun. We've got our highway ministry September 28th at 10, from 10 to 12. We need anybody who can to come and help us and be a part of that. We've got a 15-minute Gather and Grow meeting Sunday, September 29th after service. So anybody that wants to be a part of that, you're welcome to join us and let's all grow together. Our raffle fundraiser is continuing uh, to the end of this month uh, till September 29th. There's a $5 donation to enter. There's two chances to win, a $100 shell card, $100 Lawson's card. So if you're not signed up for that, get signed up. If you'd like any help, see Destiny after service. And we have Tuesday night prayer service from 7 to 8. Come and pray. Jesus said, could you not pray one hour? So let's come and pray through this week. We've got Wednesday night Bible study. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., come and be a part of that. And that's all our announcements this morning. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Genesis. Twelfth chapter. We're going to begin with verse one. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. I want to talk to us for a little while this morning on keep going further. Let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that's in this place. I ask, Lord, that you let your will be done in all things. Bless each and every person here. Touch our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I want to go back to verse 1 
and go through this again. The Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Notice the Lord said, Get out of the country. Get, get out of your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. And, and he said in verse 2, if you do this, if you'll get out of your father's house, if you'll get out of the land that you're dwelling in now and you go to the land that I will show you, if you'll keep going further, I'll make of thee a great nation. And I'll bless you and I'll make your name great and you're going to be a blessing. But he would have never been any of those things if he'd have stayed where he was at. He had to keep going further. He had to, had to keep going to the land that the Lord told him that he, that he would show him. He said, I'll show you the land that I want you to be at. And... Verse 4 says that Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Hebrews 11 and 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an, an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Sometimes when God calls us to go further, we're just going to have to obey. We're not going to know the place that we're going. We're not going to know uh, where it is that we're going. Sometimes the Lord just says go. And it's up to us to obey. And it says that Abraham obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. Now for some of us that's hard to do. Could you imagine God just telling you get up out of the land and go. Where am I going Lord? Don't matter. I just said go. And here you are, you're just, it says he went out not knowing whether he went. That's, that's walking by faith. You know, a lot of times we can go if we've got a destination, if we've got a place in mind, but just walking. Where am I supposed to go? Just go. Sometimes to get where we've got to where the Lord wants us to be, where we need to go, just requires obedience. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. But it comes from trust and obedience. Verse 4 says that Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him and he departed out of Haran. Notice he departed out of Haran. And then it says that they went forth into the land of Canaan. They kept going further. And when they got to, uh, to Canaan, he removed from there and went to a mountain on the east of Bethel. He kept going further. And then in verse 9, it says that Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. He kept going farther. And I want to point out in chapter 11 verse 31 it says that Terah took Abram his son so Terah was Abraham's father and he took his son and Lot the son of Haran his son's son and Sarah his daughter-in-law his son Abram's wife and they went forth from, uh, from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Now, Abram's father, Terah, had started the journey. He started out to go to Canaan, 
But when he got to Paran, it says he dwelt there. And he died. Terah, Abraham's father, died in Haran. And a lot of times, if we're going to get what God's got for us, we've got to go past where mama and daddy was. I love my dad. And I'm glad he's here today. I was hoping that he would be here today. But dad, as far as you went, I want to keep going further. As far as my dad goes, we should be there. We should be where our parents bring us to but there comes a point where we're going to have to keep going further and I really look up to my dad and he's a, he's a great man of God and as far as he, we, he has gone I want to keep going further you know a lot of times that's where people stop well, this was good enough for my granddaddy. This was good enough for my mama. This was good. I don't care what was good enough for them. I want to keep going further. If Abraham had never kept going further, he would have never been a blessing. He would have never been, he would have never had a great name. He would have never been the father of many nations if he'd have stayed where he was at. We've got to keep going further. There was many times that Abraham was required by God to keep going further. To keep going where everybody else stopped. In Genesis chapter 22, we all know this story. When the Lord came to Abraham and said, I want you to offer up Isaac. A lot of people would have stopped right there. I, I can't do that, Lord. But see, God wants us to keep going further. And so Abraham rose up. He saddled his ass and took his young men with him and took Isaac his son and the wood and the burnt offering and he rose up and went to the place that God had told him. And the Bible says in chapter 22 verse 4 that on the third day He'd been traveling for three days. Going further each day. That he looked up, his, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. Because he had to keep going further. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. See, past where everybody else stopped. Past where everybody else tarried. Past where everybody else abode was an experience with God for those that would keep going further. And in verse 17, when he went further, he went to that place and he laid Isaac on the altar and he took that knife and he was going to he was going further and the Lord stopped him and said now I know that thou fearest God seeing thou hast not withheld thy son thine only son from me and because he went further the Lord said that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed 
Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Why? Because he kept going further. He kept going to the place that God showed him. He kept going to the place where it says he lifted up his eyes and he looked afar off and he saw the place that God wanted him to go. And he could have stopped where he was and he could have just turned around, but he kept going further. And because he kept going further, the Lord said, I'm going to bless you. Sometimes our blessing is just a little further on. It's just a little further past where everybody stopped. It's just a little further from where we stopped the last time. Sometimes we got to keep going further. You know, I thought of the children of Israel in Egypt. And God comes in and he delivers them, destroys Egypt. And they're leaving and they're going, they're going out. And they come to the Red Sea. And Pharaoh's coming on their back. And they think it was better that we'd never left Egypt. It's been better. He, they told Moses there was no graves in Egypt. He said, so you've brought us out here to die? And the Lord said, speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. That they keep going further. Because further on, is where the land of Canaan was. Further on was where the land flowing with milk and honey was. But they had to keep going forward. They had to keep going further. Moses told them in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, he said, Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Let me reword that. The further you go, the more is yours. If you keep going further, everywhere your feet tread, everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, it's going to be yours. But if you don't keep going further, you're never going to have anything. You're never going to get more. You're never going to have more unless you keep walking. I heard a preacher say one time, the reason Israel, the, the, the nation of Israel, the land of Israel, wasn't any bigger than what it was, was because Abraham stopped walking. The Lord told Abraham, arise, walk through the land. Everywhere you, everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, I'll give it to, to you for an inheritance and to your seed. And everywhere Abraham went, was, was theirs. If he'd have kept going further, how much bigger would the land have been? Moses told the children of Israel, wherever the soles of your feet go, the promise of Abraham, it keeps going to you. He said, wherever you go, wherever the soles of your feet tread, the further you go, the more is going to be yours. It's still for us today. When Joshua takes over and he brings them into the land. They've took Jericho. They've went through all these nations and they've gained all this land for many years, a long time. They fought and warred and gained the land. And Joshua, in, in chapter 13, verse 1 of Joshua, the Lord said to Joshua, when he was old and stricken in years, there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. But you don't possess it unless you keep going further. See, they, they had where they'd been, but to possess the more that remained required going further than they'd already been. It required stepping out of what was familiar with you. It required stepping out of the known and into the unknown. But the land would have not been possessed and more would not have been gained if they hadn't kept going further. Caleb came to Joshua in the next chapter, in chapter 14, and he told Joshua, he said, you know the things that the Lord 
spake concerning me. The Lord had told Moses that because Caleb had followed the Lord with all his heart, because Caleb had another spirit with him, everywhere the soles of his feet went, that land was going to be his. As far as he went was his. And he had even helped his brethren and, and all the other tribes They'd been fighting and battling and conquering and gaining land. And he comes to Joshua and he says, you know the thing the Lord spoke to me? He said, I'm ready for my mountain. I'm ready for what the Lord has for me. You know what the Lord spake concerning me. And verse 11 says, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so my, is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. But if you're going to come in, you got to keep going out. You got to keep going further. A lot of times that verse is looked at as they went out to war and they come back into war or come back in from war. But I want to, I want to make a little different picture today and say you're never going to come in to what God has for you unless you keep going out. Unless you keep going further. He said as my strength was then both for war to go out and to come in. I'm strong enough to go out and I'm strong enough to come in to what, God, to what God's got for me. But it requires keeping on going further. Ezekiel wrote of the man that had the line in his hand. And the man went forth and measured out so far. And Ezekiel 47 and 3, it says he went forth eastward and he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters were to the ankles. He went out from the bank a little bit further and from the bank a thousand cubits the water was ankle deep and it says in verse 4 that he measured again he went a little farther out and he brought me a little farther out and the waters were to the knees and he said it didn't stop there again he measured a thousand. Again, he went out a little farther and he brought me through and the waters were to the loins. And verse 5 says that afterward he measured another thousand. He went out a little farther from where we already was and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. If we're ever going to get to the river's that we cannot pass over rivers of greatness, all this depth and all the things that God has, it's going to require that we keep going out just a little bit further. We can't stay where we are. We've got to keep going just a little bit farther. In the book of Mark, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee and he saw Simon, which was Peter and Andrew, and he told them, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And in Mark 1 and 19, the scripture says, when he, Jesus, had gone a little further thence, he just kept going a little bit farther and he saw two more disciples James and John. I wonder who we would see if we kept going a little farther. Who would be in that next aisle at Walmart that needed something from God, that needed help from the Lord, help that we're supposed to have if we would just went a little bit farther? Who would be in the next house down the road 
if we went just a little bit farther? Who would we find next if we went to the next town and we went just a little bit farther? That's what Jesus told them in verse 38 of Mark. He said, let us go into the next towns. Boys, we got to keep going a little farther. Jesus was the most intense, the most encouraging, and the most dedicated teacher and example of going further. He said many times to his disciples, come on boys, we've got to go to the other side. Many times in the scripture, he said, let us go over to the other side. There was a, there's another verse that says, he must needs go through Samaria. See, he had to keep going further. He had to keep going out. He had to keep going forth. It was required of him that he kept going further. In Mark 10 and verse 1, it says that he arose from thence. He arose from where he was and he came into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. Sometimes if we're going to reach people, sometimes if we're going to make a difference, it's going to be required of us that we go to the farther side of things, that we keep going further, further, excuse me, than we've ever been before. Further than everyone else has went. Further than where we, we stopped last time. I'm sure that Jesus had came into the coast of Judea, but this time he went further. He went to the farther side because there were people there that needed to be taught. And everywhere he went, he preached, he healed, he delivered, he saved, he warned, and he taught. He told one man that came and asked him this question. The man came and said, what is the first commandment? And Jesus told that man in Mark 12 and 29 that asked the question, what is the first commandment? Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the next verse says that you will love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And he kept going and said the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Verse 32 and to love him with all the heart, with all the other understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength. And to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Verse 34. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. I want to present the thought tonight, today, I'm sorry, he was not far from the kingdom of God. Just a little farther from where he was at, he would have been in the kingdom of God. But it says that no man after that durst ask him any question. Just a little farther. So many people find themselves here they're not far, just not there yet. Some here today are so close, so close. You don't even know how close you are. And if we would just keep going just a little bit farther. But like them, no one asked any more question. Not far but not quite there. I can't help but think, why did he not ask? 
How can I make sure, Lord, that I make it there? If he'd have went just a little bit farther, Lord, how do I get there? I'm not, you said I'm not far. Well, how can I, how can I make it? I'd hate to know that I was not far from something so wonderful as the kingdom of God that I wouldn't go just a little bit farther to know how can I get there. That I wouldn't find out what it took to make it. That I wouldn't keep going just a little bit farther. In Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 21, it says that Jesus, he was going forth into the way. He had left where he was at, and he was in the process of going a little farther. And there came one running and kneeled to him and said, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. That is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. I've observed all this from my youth. I've done this. I've obeyed this. And Jesus beholding him loved him. See, that's where a lot of people are at. They're at that place where Jesus loves them. But one thing is lacked. Just a little farther on from where you're at. Just a little farther. He said, go thy way. Go farther Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. Just keep going a little farther. To, to keep going further was too grievous. It says he went away grieved because he had much possessions he had many riches and just a little bit farther was too grievous. It's too far. It's too far up to these altars from where we sit. We could have forgiveness. We could touch him if we just went a little bit farther. It's too far to make it to the baptistry to be baptized in Jesus' name. It's, it's just too far. It's not too far. It's just a little further. It's too far to stand up here and receive the Holy Ghost. It's not too far. It's just a little bit farther. It's too far to walk up there and ask for prayer for my healing. The woman with the issue of blood didn't think it was too far. It says when she heard that Jesus was coming through, she arose and she came in the press behind him. He was ahead of her. Her healing, her healing was in front of her. And she pressed through the crowd to come to him. No doubt there were times that someone cut in front of her she could see the hem of his garment. It was right there just a little bit farther, but someone stepped in the way. 
She didn't stop. She kept going further. Just a little bit further is the hem of his garment. Just a little bit further. I know if I can touch it, I'll be healed. Just a little bit further. But for us, it's too great. It's just too far. And in this same story of the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus was on his way to a man's house. The man's name was Jairus. He had came and he'd he'd sought Jesus and he had said, Lord, my my daughter's dying. But if if you'll come, I, I know she'll be healed. And while Jesus was going, To this man's house, the woman with the issue of blood came. And while everything happened with the woman with the issue of blood, there came one from Jairus' house and said in Mark 5 and 35, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? No doubt Jairus probably thought we were so close. Just a little farther to my house. and My daughter would have lived. It was just a little farther on and, and we would have been there. But I'm here to tell us today, even death doesn't stop my Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, as soon as Jesus heard these words, as soon as he heard, thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? He turned to Jairus and he said, be not afraid. Only believe. He didn't give fear and he didn't give doubt time to come into the picture. He didn't give fear and he didn't give doubt time to stop what was going to happen. He said, be not afraid, only believe. Faith can keep going further when everything else says it's over. Faith can keep going further when everyone else says all hope is lost. Faith can keep going further when sight says there's no point in trouble in the master. And Jesus just went a little farther. It says The scripture, this story goes on to say that he came to the house. They were out in the street. He just kept going a little farther and he came to the house. And when he got to the house, it says that he put everybody out and he brought the father and the mother and those that were with him. Peter, James, and John were with him. And he brought them and entered in to where the young girl laid. He went farther and he brought them with him. He brought them farther. And Jesus took the girl by the hand and said, Arise. And where death said, the end, a 12-year-old girl arose and walked and she kept going further in her life because the master kept going farther. Jesus always kept going farther. The Bible says that he is able to do exceedingly 
abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. If we can think it, he can take it further than that. He can always take us further. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, Jesus was on his way to the cross. This was just moments before they came and arrested him and took him before Pilate. They'd had the Last Supper and Jesus had took his disciples and they went to the place called Gethsemane and he told the disciples, he said, wait here. And he took Peter, James, and John with him and they went on a little farther than the rest of them did. And then Jesus told Peter, James, and John, he said, Terry, you here, watch and pray. And verse 39 says that he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. Just a little farther. Just a little farther sometimes past the place where everyone else sat down. Just a little farther than the place where others just waited. Just a little bit farther in prayer is where the Father's will was found. He prayed and he said, he said, Father, with you all things are possible. Take this cup from me. And he went a little farther in prayer and he said, if this cup pass not from me except I drink it. A little bit farther in prayer, he found the Father's will. You've got to drink the cup. We don't go far enough in prayer. Just a little further and a little more earnestly in prayer is when the angel came and strengthened him a little further on in prayer. A little further in prayer where his sweat became as drops of blood. We don't go far enough. He didn't stop there just a little farther to the whipping post where the stripes were placed upon his back. Just a little farther to the top of the hill called Calvary. And he just kept going further. Just a little farther to the cross being nailed to it and lift it up. It's just, just a little bit far. Just a little farther to the grave. Just a little farther to rise it again and enter into his glory. But he never got to his glory if he hadn't kept going further. We've got to keep going further. Just a little farther, he took them as far as to Bethany and he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Jesus was the ultimate teacher of going further. And he instilled this in his disciples. 
He told them, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, ye shall do also, but you're going to go farther and even greater works shall you do. Jesus wanted them to go further. He didn't want it to end, but he wanted it to keep going further. He said, if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I go to my father. For my father is greater than I. Jesus went further again. He kept going further. And he told his disciples that he was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And his work in the flesh never left Israel, Judea, and Samaria. He, he was a lot of times close by around the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem. And, and I heard a man say one time, the radius... Of, of the distance that Jesus traveled and and just right here right now the farther in in the land that I remember Jesus going was when he was a child and the angel came and told Joseph to take him to Egypt he his ministry was in that area But he told his disciples, I want you to go further. He said, tarry in Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high. But once you are, they were in the mountain, the Mount of Olives. And he said, go and tarry in Jerusalem. Just go a little bit farther till you're endued with power from on high. And just a little bit further past Bethany in Jerusalem, they received the power. But if they'd have stayed in Bethany, if they'd have never went to Jerusalem and entered into that upper room, they'd have never received the power. Because receiving the power requires that you keep going further. But he said, once you receive the power, he said, you'll be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And then you're going to go further. Then you're going to go into Samaria. But I don't want you to stop there. I want you to keep going further. And he said to the uttermost part of the earth. I want you to keep going further. And the Bible says that they went forth and preached everywhere. Everywhere. The Lord working with them. See, the Lord went further with them. If you'll go further, the Lord will go further with you. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. He said, go ye into all the world. He said, go into all nations and preach and teach. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Where? Beginning at Jerusalem. But I want you to keep going further and go among all nations. We've got to keep going further. And the Bible says daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. They kept going further. 
Let's all stand this morning as our praise team comes.